good evening all welcome to this session we'll try to see the importance of prone imaging recent in a case discussion there was a discussion about uh, advantages of prone position and prone imaging so i have searched the literature and the articles and i have found all these entities you can pause this slide and these are all the areas where prone imaging is helpful so coming to the first one so these are the technique that this is the technique of hrct prone imaging you can pause the slide and see and also the prone imaging the uses are uh, diaphragmatic and breast tissue attenuation this can help improve the study specificity and reduce artifact abnormalities prone imaging also used to reduce the incidence of breast attenuation artifacts in myocardial studies motion artifacts are also less in prone imaging and patient motion is also reduced in prone imaging so this is the common thing we commonly encountered in practice so we may see uh, opacities noted in the posterior basal lungs uh, these are nothing but gravitational opacities or sometimes atelectasis in the dependent parts of the lungs but whenever you see like this definitely do the imaging in prone imaging so the all whatever opacities which are seen in the supine are completely resolved suggesting that these are nothing but gravitational opacities or atelectasis due to uh, positional or dependent parts of the lung so even this is other case where you can see this is the ild this is the imaging in supine position but however in prone position the pathology still persists the ground glass opacity is not in a interstitial septal thickening honeycombing and also bronchiectasis changes are seen in the lower parts of the lungs in the prone imaging so prone imaging also is useful in differentiating uh, ground glass of differentiating ground glass opacities or basal atelectasis and uh, them from the interstitial lung disease so next uh, prone imaging also helps in differentiating air crescent sign from monoid sign so this is nothing but air crescent sign and this is monoid sign so when this is nothing but a pre existing cavity and there is a fungal ball this is in supine position and this is in prone position there is free movement of the ball so whenever there is a mobile mobile mass within the cavity definitely suspect monoid sign which is common in immunocompetent patients and which which nothing but aspergilloma in pre existing pulmonary cavity if this this mass is not mobile in in supine and prone position definitely this is most likely air crescent sign which is seen in immunocompromised patients like and the most common examples will be invasive aspergillus sir and sometimes in bronchogenic carcinoma so prone position or prone imaging definitely helps in differentiating monoid sign from air crescent sign next this is the new sign in of pneumothorax this is sharp edge sign of on prone images this was a baby uh, presented with chest pain and there are bilateral opacities there is a clear sharp lucency noted in the uh, noted on the lateral lateral surface of the upper descending aorta and between the lung and also you can see there is pneumothorax also noted along the left left lateral hemithorax so this strip of lucency is nothing but called as a sharp edge of aorta on prone images if the if there is if the imaging is not possible in supine patient supine position uh, in newborns and even especially infants uh, the sharp edge of aorta on prone images is very classical sign for pneumothorax so this is the a journal from which i have taken this article next even prone imaging is also better is also useful in supermesenteric artery syndrome here this is supine supine patient this is the nothing but bermel follow through in supine uh, position you can see there is abrupt cut off at the level of third part of the duodenum due to compression of the third part of the duodenum between the aorta and the supermesenteric artery but on prone position completely this uh, obstruction is lost and also there is free flow of the barium beyond the third third uh, part of the duodenum into the uh, jejunal lobes so symptoms of supermesenteric artery syndromes are also relieved by, relieved uh, are relieved by releasing the angle between the aorta and supermesenteric artery in prone position and even left lateral decubitus position and knee chest position and these are the values which you have to remember for diagnosing supermesenteric artery syndrome next even prone imaging is also useful in ct pneumocolon or colonography and git so this is the journal the value of prone imaging in ct pneumocolon so diagnostic distension of all the five segments of the bowel are better better seen in 69% of case in prone imaging whereas only 24% of patients in supine imaging rectum and sigmoid colon were well distended in 100 and 88% respectively on prone ct but no, only in 58 and 33% of cases in supine ct even fluid fecal residue were better eliminated on prone ct and also prone imaging also offers statistically superior small bowel distension of both normal and disease loops in mri small bowel follow through so even prone imaging is also helpful in bowel distension in mri small bowel follow through so this is the advantage of prone imaging in ct pneumocolon or colonography and even git even in colonography better depiction depiction of polyps is seen on prone imaging than in supine imaging next uh, we can see this prone imaging also useful in genitive urinary tract here you can see there is a stone impacted uh, in the this is intramural stone at the level of vuj so whenever you want to differentiate uh, intramural stone or stone impacted in the vuj 
from that of the uh, stone that has passed into the bladder but always we have to do this imaging in prone position so in the prone position if the stone is completely passed uh, passed into the bladder it will fall anteriorly but even in the prone position if the stone is struck at the level of uj it is most likely intramural stone or impacted stone at the vesicuretic junction so prone scanning is helpful in differentiating uh, vesicuretic junction stones which are impacted or intramural stones and from that of the stones which are passed into the bladder which will affect which will uh, have which will help in patient management and also prone ct is better is nothing but better accurately localizes distal ureter or distal ureteric stones and also prone position helps in filling of obstructed ureter in presence of hydronephrosis even prone position is also better useful in digital subsection angiography of kidneys because uh, especially in obese and uncooperative patients in prone position uh, the bowel gas is less and also there will be better depiction of the kidneys so prone position helps in differentiating uh, intramural vesicuretic junction stones or stones impacted at vuj from that of the stones that has passed into the bladder next even prone position in mri is also useful in diagnosing orbital varics so this is in supine position we are not able to see the mass but in prone position with valve sulfide you can clearly see there is a mass noted in the orbital apex in the intracranial compartment and also in the orbital apex which is nothing but orbital varics so prone position with valve sulfide maneuver during mri is helpful in uh, diagnosing orbital venous varics and also helps in differentiating orbital venous varics from other veno lymphatic malformations thanks to dr mahesh sir for contributing this case so always in whenever you are and out of orbital venous varix definitely try prone position with valve sulva maneuver next even prone position also useful in low back ache in supine patient supine patients uh, sometimes uh, the disc herniations or ligamental level thickening or spondylolisthesis or foramenal stenosis is not clearly seen in those cases definitely try prone position here you can see uh, this is the supine patient and this is the prone patient disc herniation is clearly depicted in the prone position and also ligamental level thickening is clearly depicted in the prone position even spondylolisthesis is also clearly demarcated in the prone position than in supine position and also foramenal stenosis is also more depicted in the clearly demarcated in the prone position than in supine position so the prone position uh, better uh, in the lower back ache cases better depicts the occurrence of disc herniation or protrusion thickening or buckling or folding of ligament of flamen spondylolisthesis and even foramenal stenosis even uh, this is a case of hirayama disease uh, normally hirayama disease uh, this is nothing but the normal neutral position and also flex this is the slight flexion position in some patient if the flexion is not possible we can use uh, prone position with full flexion here you can see the cord compression is better depicted in the prone position even anterior displacement of the dura is also better depicted in the prone position and also enlargement of the epidural space with strong enhancement is also better depicted in the prone position with full flexion so prone position with full flexion also helps helps in di di diagnosing and even better depiction of the findings in hirayama disease this is the journal from which i have taken this and even prone imaging also used in spine somewhere sometimes it uh, prone imaging also sensitive and specific tool for uh, diagnosing tethered or retethering retethering of the spinal cord and even magnetic resonance imaging in superior prone position for diagnosing lumbar adhesive arachnoiditis even in l5 s1 dysplasia because of the uh, acute uh, limitation of the gantry angle because there is acute angulation of the l5 s1 dysplasia prone position better depicts the in the uh, di uh, diagnosing l5 s1 dysplasia alignment than in superior position and even prone myelography better depicts the degree of cervical spinal stenosis than supine myelography in myelopathic patients and also this is prone spect myocardial perfusion defects here this is a perfusion defect which is seen in supine position in the anterior wall but it is completely not seen in the prone position and also there is some other inferior wall defect uh, perfusion defect noted in the uh, supine position but it is not seen in the prone position so perfusion defects in supine position will be uh, will be completely disappeared in prone position were caused by attenuation defects and not due to myocardial infection so it helps in differentiating uh, artifacts from ischemic heart disease even prone imaging can also allow the efficient radio pharmaceutical usage by obviating the necessity of rest study in technician 99m methoxy isobutyl isonitrile myocardial perfusion studies even prone imaging also uh, helps in improving inferior wall attenuation artifact by producing an anterior shift of the heart and lowering of the diaphragm and subdiaphragmatic regions even prone imaging also helps in reducing unnecessary coronary angiographies and rest perfusion studies which can decrease radiation dose and even investigation time and even we have seen in covid era there is prone position is very helpful in ards this is the, all the how it is helpful you can pause the slide and see the reasons and also prone position is also used in some surgeries so thank you all